as the leader of the free world, the President of the United States is also the most targeted person on the planet. But to be able to effectively carry out their job, they simply can't be hidden within an impenetrable bunker. It's the role of the Secret Service to protect them wherever they go. And as an agency with more than 7,000 employees and an annual budget of more than $2 billion, it's the most advanced security detail on the planet. From the vehicles they use to the training they receive, it's time for us to take a look at 15 of the most next-level Secret Service tactics. Number 15. The Beast Every part of the motorcade is designed with one purpose in mind, to keep the President safe, and a major part of that is a vehicle that they travel in, which is known as the Beast. This is an 11-ton monster. It's a converted Cadillac, but it's very different from any you'd be able to buy, and it's packed full of defensive features that provide the Secret Service with the tools they need to keep the leader safe. The vehicle is hermetically sealed from the outside to protect against fluid and chemical attacks. It's got run-flat tires, night vision cameras, smoke screens, and oil slicks, and reportedly has armor that's made of aluminum, ceramic, and steel. The walls of the beast are 8 inches thick, or about 20 centimeters. Their multi-layered windows are about 5 inches, or 13 centimeters thick. And the doors are said to each weigh as much as that of a Boeing 747 door, because of how heavily armored they are. It's also impossible to open the passenger doors of the beast from the inside or the outside without having a digital key. And each driver is not only a member of the Secret Service, but also has undergone extensive emergency driving courses to know how to react in developing situations. The Beast has its own air supply, too. It carries backup bags of the President's blood and also carries a large arsenal of weaponry with it, such as pump-action shotguns and a grenade launcher. The Beast basically is a fortress on wheels that's capable of defending against anything any enemy can throw at it. But with all that weight, the only downside is it's relatively slow in comparison to other vehicles, so there's still the need to have support vehicles with it just to make sure everything's safe. Number 14. Sistema with schools first emerging in Russia in the early 1990s following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Sistema is a martial arts technique that's become increasingly popular with security forces, including the Secret Service, and most agents are now put through extensive training to prepare them for anything. The art has its origins several decades earlier, though, when it was used almost exclusively by Soviet security agents, and was one of the reasons they were able to be so effective in their roles and prevent a number of attempted assassinations. What's unique about Sistema is that it's an anything-goes style of combat that's specifically designed for the most extreme situations that may involve having to defend against several armed attackers. To do this, you're taught to focus on the enemy's six body levers, the elbows, neck, knees, waist, ankles, and shoulders. By delivering strikes to these areas and targeting pressure points in each, it's possible to disable and disorient aggressors to reduce the imminent danger and give opportunity to escape. Combining fluid natural movements with precision and speed, this can also be the difference between an aggressor managing to shoot the president at close range or an agent deflecting their aim in time to prevent such a catastrophe. Number 13. Mobile Blood Bank the Secret Service is a huge organization that employs many thousands of people, but only a select few are assigned to the Presidential Protection Division, which is the branch of the agency responsible for protecting the President and their family. To get this assignment, they have training above and beyond anyone else, and one of the most important things they learn is 10-minute medicine. Not only are transport plans arranged so the President is never more than 10 minutes away from a trauma center, which has an agent posted at it, but they also carry bags of the President's blood as part of the motorcade, so on-site care can be provided if necessary. There's also a fully equipped medical car that's part of the motorcade that, if needs be, contains everything the President's doctor would need to treat all but the most severe of injuries. This focus on medical training and response was crucial to saving Ronald Reagan's life after an assassination attempt in 1981. He had been shot and was initially believed that he only had suffered a minor injury to his rib, so the plan was to take him back to the White House, but a Secret Service agent inside the President's limo noticed frothy blood coming from his mouth, which was a sign that he was bleeding in the lungs. The President was rerouted to the designated hospital, and because the bags of blood were with him, they were able to immediately operate, and he went on to make a full recovery. Number 12. The Water Rescue Detail with so many potential ways that the President could find themselves in danger, the Secret Service has to be prepared for any conceivable threat. Schedules will see the Commander-in-Chief flying to destinations or going by motorcade and traveling across tricky terrain. The Secret Service, therefore, has specialist units that are trained to operate in any potential scenario, such as if the President becomes stranded in the wilderness. 
but it's the water rescue detail that's seen as the most elite, with agents being taught how to rescue someone from the most extreme conditions. Whether as a result of Air Force One being forced to make an emergency landing in water, if the motorcade ends up in a river after an attack, or the president gets into difficulty with riptides and strong currents on the beach during a vacation, these agents will always be on hand to respond. You might wonder just how likely it is for a world leader to need this type of protection, but in 1967, the then Prime Minister of Australia, Harold Holt, went missing while swimming in the ocean and was never seen again. Whether this was an unfortunate accident or a planned act, it's still not known to this day. So it's best that the Secret Service is completely prepared just in case the President of the United States finds themselves in a similar situation. Number 11. Electronic Defense of all the vehicles that accompany the presidential limousine and the motorcade, the one that's arguably the most important, and by far the most advanced, is the USSS Electronic Countermeasures Suburban, which is also known as the Watchtower. While most vehicles are designed to assist with the defense of the president, this one not only protects against electronic warfare, but can also launch its own offensive attacks. Usually taking place in the front of the presidential spare coach, it's used to counter guided attacks such as those from IEDs, rocket-propelled grenades, and anti-tank guided missiles. It's got two antennae on the roof that are used for barrage jamming, which is the main method of countering these threats, and the setup of these antennae can be adjusted based on the frequencies they need to operate at. There's also two dome-shaped electronic warfare sensors, which can be used to detect the launch of RPGs or anti-tank missiles. And upon detection or laser rangefinder illumination, the system will automatically trigger a salvo of infrared smoke grenades that will act as both a visual block and an IR block too. The presidential limousine is equipped with a vision enhancer system that enables it to continue driving even if these countermeasures have been deployed, meaning the electronic countermeasure Suburban can then focus on detecting and eliminating those responsible for the threat alongside the counter-assault team. Number 10. Roadrunner the vehicles involved in the presidential motorcade will often change depending on where the president is traveling and the particular risks that have been determined, but one that's a mainstay of every one is called the Roadrunner. This is the nerve center of the motorcade and is a vital way in which the Secret Service ensures agents are equipped with all the latest intel and support. It's a heavily modified Chevrolet Suburban that's fitted with run-flat tires, protective armor, a vehicle transponder, and a turbocharger and the way that you can recognize it is by the antenna platform that's mounted on the roof, because this is the White House Communications Agency vehicle. Its platform contains a SATCOM dome that has a tracking dish within it and acts as the primary data uplink and downlink and the main communication path for the entire motorcade. It's responsible for encrypting duplex radio and streaming video, which is then sent up to a military satellite. With all voice channels being encrypted and the ability to contact any part of the government, the Roadrunner not only ensures the Secret Service can keep the motorcade locked down and safe, but also enables the President to run the country in virtually the same way that they can from the White House. Amazingly, the Roadrunner is so important that to ensure there's always one available for a motorcade, a total of 22 of them have been built so far, and they're constantly being upgraded with the latest technology by the Naval Research Lab. Number 9. The Food Testers Historically, Heads of State had food testers whose sole responsibility was to take a mouthful of every meal that's served to make sure it isn't poisoned before the important people have some. And while there are rumors that this still happens in the White House, officially at least, it doesn't. Instead, the whole process by which food arrives in front of the President is closely monitored, and sometimes the length agents have to go to to do this are unbelievable. First of all, any food that's sent in for the president from a farm wanting to offer its latest variety of beef jerky to a little old lady who's baked a cake is thrown in the trash immediately, because you can never be totally sure who sent it. Next, the supply chain of every ingredient that's provided to the White House is meticulously investigated, and once it's given the thumbs up, companies are added to a list of trusted suppliers and undergo random inspections from that point on. Chefs in the kitchen, despite being trusted members of the White House staff, will always be watched over by agents while they're preparing food for the president to make sure they don't do anything untoward to it. But there's one surprising aspect. No such rules apply if the president wants to order a pizza or a takeaway. Instead, it's simply ordered to a nearby building so there's no way the staff at the restaurant know who it's going to, and the chances something bad happens are drastically reduced then. Number 8. The Counter-Assault Team 
Members of the Secret Service have to be prepared for any and every threat that comes their way, but each person has a specific role to play in this. The most visible are the personal bodyguards that are always seen walking next to the President and ride in vehicles with them, but there's far more support nearby. The Counter Assault Team, for example, is a specialized tactical unit that supports the protective division of the Secret Service, that closely follow behind motorcades and are present at any location of the President, or someone under protection appears. In contrast to the protective personnel whose role is to prevent the protected people from being injured and to evacuate them to a safe place as soon as possible, the counter-assault team are the ones who will actively track down the threat and eliminate it. A member of the counter-assault team is permanently assigned to the President's detail, and it's known by the codename Hawkeye. Making up a larger part of the motorcade with several members present, CAT members usually wear black battle dress uniforms and, as standard, are equipped with an SR-16 rifle, a Sig Sauer P-229 pistol, and flashbang grenades. Depending on the mission requirements, they may also be given heavier weaponry and need to be able to operate the entire arsenal to even be considered as a part of the team. It's probably the most competitive division within the Secret Service, and to join it, members must have already completed an eight-month course at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Glencoe, Georgia, and have served on the Secret Service for several years. There's then a further seven-week training course that involves close-quarter combat and counter-ambush tactics, and requires applicants to be able to complete three pull-ups while wearing a 45-pound or 20-kilo vest, and to complete a one-and-a-half-mile or 2.4-kilometer run in under nine minutes. It's thought that only around 1 in 10 of those who apply are ultimately accepted into the counter-assault team, and they truly are the best of the best of the best. Number 7. Nuclear Biological Chemical Vehicle The President reportedly gets as many as 30 death threats per day, and while it's not fully clear how many of these represent legitimate plans to end their life, the Secret Service has to go to extreme lengths to ensure no one manages to enact a plan. They can never be sure where or how a risk may present itself, so there's a little-known vehicle that's part of the motorcade that plays a hugely important role. Known as the Nuclear Biological Chemical Vehicle, or NBC for short, it's a version of a military vehicle that's often deployed in war zones. Inside, there's an NBC sensor suite as well as connection to a meteorological system, and it continuously collects and tests samples from the surrounding environment, mainly through a use of a chemical biological mass spectrometer. Those inside the vehicle are kept safe by using a positive overpressure system, where the internal pressure is higher than outside, and this prevents material from leaking into the cabin while it's in operation. Needless to say, at the first sign of any nuclear or chemical threat, the alarm is raised and the President is evacuated, while a specialized team will move in to determine where the readings had come from and hopefully who was responsible for the attack. It also carries the necessary protective equipment needed to protect people within the affected radius and medicines to help counteract radiation poisoning if needed. Number 6. Working the Rope Most presidential engagements are planned well ahead of time and give the Secret Service ample opportunity to scout the area and ensure there are no points of vulnerability. But when you're looking after the leading figure in the free world, things don't always go to plan. Sometimes the president will make an impromptu stop at a location or take part in a meet and greet which hadn't been scheduled, and this is said to be the most anxious time for any Secret Service agent. Of course, they are trained to cope with this eventuality, with a technique that's called working the rope. They're more than aware that threats can present themselves from virtually any direction, and no matter how harmless someone in the crowd may seem, they could just be a matter of seconds away from launching an attack. You'll have noticed how they always wear dark shades and these perform two vital roles. The first is to stop anyone from knowing where they're looking, and that's what they're doing. It's quickly looking around at everyone nearby to see what's in their hands or if there's any suspicious activity and they don't want any potential aggressors to know they've been spotted. The other purpose of the glasses is to protect their eyes from any liquids that may be thrown at them or bright lights that may be shown at them, ensuring they can continuously keep on the job at hand and ensure the president's safety. Number 5. They Protect Anyone at Risk The Secret Service are mainly associated with the responsibility of protecting the President, of course, but they are in fact in charge of the security of everyone whose life may be at risk in the line of governmental service. Once someone has been elected into the role of President or Vice President, they have a Secret Service detail for the rest of their lives, with the only exception being they can change this to a private security contractor once they've left the White House. 
When it comes to other members of staff, things are taken on a case-by-case -case basis. If a policy announcement proves to be rather controversial, the person behind it may be protected until it blows over, and all close relatives of the president are protected while he's in office, to the extent where they even may escort children to school and stand guard outside of the classroom until lessons have finished. This can prove to be a vital and reassuring role to White House staff members and has been used to good effect in recent years. Following the September 11th terrorist attacks, for example, several White House staff were escorted at the request of President Bush to ensure that they were safe and to be certain that the fear for their own life wouldn't impact the difficult decisions that were having to be made. Number 4. Root Car and Pilot Car if you've ever watched a presidential motorcade, the first you're aware of its approach is probably the wailing sirens of the escorting police motorbikes. But the truth is, it began a lot earlier than that. The Secret Service knows the president's movements well in advance, so they plan out the route that will be taken, and when possible will arrive on location several days before to conduct a security sweep to ensure there are no dangers in the way, and that the roads are suitable for the extremely heavy presidential limousine. When not actually traveling, a route car will drive the planned route several minutes before the main motorcade, and this is used to conduct a check to ensure the roads have been closed off and secured, and provides guidance for the sweepers, which are the police on motorcycle responsible for the main part of crowd and road control. The pilot car then performs the same role, but just a few seconds ahead of the main motorcade to act as the final check to be certain it's safe to proceed. This car is in constant communication with the rest of the motorcade and can change direction or speed at any moment. Then, behind the police bikes, the first car of the actual motorcade is the lead car, and this is used to guide all of the other vehicles, and to act as the first buffer with what lies ahead, just in case the route car and pilot car have both missed something. By using this setup, the Secret Service leaves absolutely nothing to chance. Similar procedures are in place, of course, for anywhere the President visits too. The advance detail will scout every venue and plan stop to be absolutely certain there aren't any surprises in store, and it's arguably this level of preparation that is the most important part of the role, because if you avoid danger altogether in the first place, then it's much easier to protect someone. Number 3. The President is Never Alone The Secret Service has to have at least one agent with eyes on the President at all times, with the exception of when the Commander-in-Chief is asleep in a room that's been previously checked with an agent stationed outside. According to retired agents, this also means that they have to accompany their primary when they're in the bathroom, visiting the doctor's office, or anywhere else they may go meaning there's no concept of privacy when you're the president. This is because a threat can potentially emerge from anywhere, and no matter how trusted someone might be, an agent will always be close by with a firearm. When Ronald Reagan was in office, for example, an armed agent even joined him while he was having a prostate exam and kept watch on the doctor's every move, and was prepared to shoot the doctor if he did anything that made him appear as any sort of risk. It's part of the role that, while members of the Secret Service are comprehensively trained for, presidents notoriously take a while to adjust to. But this is just something they have to get used to, because it's the only way their safety can be guaranteed at all times. Number 2. Ink Tags in the modern day, we're quite used to the idea that any message we post online, no matter how many precautions we take, could eventually be tracked back to us. And this not only allows security services to find potential aggressors, but makes people think twice before making dangerous comments in the first place. You might then think that sending a letter is a safer bet, but it turns out that the Secret Service has, for decades, had a sneaky way of narrowing down where these have come from, too. They're able to conduct handwriting analysis, which can often lend clues to the culprit, but there's always the chance that they have cheated this method or simply printed the letter from a computer. To counteract this, the Secret Service has a vast database that it maintains in collaboration with ink manufacturers and holds the details of chemical tags that are added during the manufacturing process that show which brand made the ink used in a letter. And this usually shows which country and potentially which state or store it was sold in. By using this information, they can at least narrow down the search parameters and significantly increase the chance of finding who wrote the letter. And then this is added to their ability to also identify tracers in paper and even the glue used to seal an envelope. You realize there's no such thing as anonymity if you're threatening the president. Number 1. Keeping the Secret 
However much we may publicly know about the president's security arrangements, you can be sure that there's far more that's kept secret. The presidential limousine, the Beast, is a great example of that because it's packed full of technology and measures that aren't widely known about. To maintain this veil of secrecy, every retired presidential limo is completely destroyed by the Secret Service when they're taken out of commission. This isn't just a case of sending it to the scrapyard to be carefully dismantled, either. It's quite an explosive affair. Secret Service agents are invited to fire on the vehicle with bullets and explosive rounds until there's virtually nothing left. Of course, with the tough armor that's used to build it, this can take some time, and that's exactly the point. The process is carried out to prove to the agents responsible for protecting it, as well as those planning on attacking it, just how strong and durable that limousine is. And no matter how much you manage to isolate the beast, it'd take far too long to actually harm someone inside before support troops made it back. The other reason for ending the limo in this way is to simply ensure that all the classified and secret technology and systems fitted to the car are completely destroyed, which means that it's impossible for people planning an attack to learn how to get around these defensive measures. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.